Hello everyone. Uh, so this is uh, an interesting case of a patient uh, whose diabetes was uncontrolled and uh, how he managed to uh, control his diabetes and also he was able to stop insulin, heavy doses of insulin that the patient was taking. Uh, subsequently, patient was able to uh, stop his insulin. 50 year old male, CEO of multinational company with type 2 diabetes for 10 years. Come to our OPD. He is asymptomatic, body mass index 32. So we check the uh, weight, height, and uh, BMI came out to be 32 uh, in obesity category. BP was 126 by 80. HB1C test, recent HB1C came out to be 12. Blood glucose fasting 200. In the liver function test, gamma GT levels were high 150. Normally they are like up to 60 or 70 international units per liter. In the kidney function test, the most important assessment that we did was uh, uh, eGFR calculation. So that came out to be 55. Urine albumin creatinine ratio was 900. Normally it should be less than 30. So patient is having a macro albuminuria range of uh, uh, albumin excretion, so CKD and uh, similar results were there for past three months. Lipid profile normal. So this is the uh, uh, presentation of uh, our patient. Now, uh, when we ask for the physical activity, patient said ki, uh, he is very busy. He can't go for any walk, exercise. He can't join any gym. So literally or totally sedentary lifestyle. Smoking, nil. Alcohol, nil. In the present medicines of uh, our patient, Metformin was 1 gram twice a day, cetagliptin 100 milligram once a day. He was taking insulin mix 30-70 combination 40 units before breakfast and 30 units before dinner. So total of 70 units patient was taking along with the oral anti-diabetes agents. So let's see how we manage the patient. So what are the uh, problem areas here? First problem area, uncontrolled diabetes despite taking insulin. Obesity, BMI 32, chronic kidney disease, so elevated liver enzymes. Patient should be on lifestyle modifications plus oral anti-diabetes plus insulin. Which patient is already taking oral anti-diabetes and insulin? Uh, so lifestyle modification should be there for diet and physical activity. Uh, we will assess chronic kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease is present. Albuminuria is uh, there. Patient should be put on SGLT inhibitors. If albuminuria is absent, then either we can go for SGLT inhibitors or GLP agonist. Why? Uh, the other uh, assessment that we did was for obesity. So if patient is obese, so we will give weight loss anti-diabetes agents and these are SGLT inhibitor or GLP agonist. So uh, that uh, for us, uh, it was uh, a way, uh, it was a very straightforward uh, decision. Ki we should uh, put the patient on lifestyle modification. We should put the patient on SGLT inhibitor or GLP agonist. Uh, let's see. Uh, how does uh, patient uh, uh, response came? Let's add SDLT inhibitor. We told the patient. So, uh, patient, doc, I had bad experience of recurrent penile fungal infection with these drugs. Uh, recurrent. So, that means patient refused taking this uh, group of uh, drug. Okay. Uh, let's try GLP agonist. Uh, patient, are you talking about liraglutide injection? No. I can't tolerate its nausea effects had taken it earlier. So patient has already tried. Patient uh, has diabetes for 10 years, must have visited many doctors and uh, most of these doctors must have suggested SGLT inhibitor or GLP agonist. So let's see how should we go next. So what next? Should I shift the patient on bolus basal insulin regime? That means that four, uh, four time insulin patient will be taking three times before each meals and one will be bedtime uh, basal insulin. Uh, but 
patient said, I can't take four time insulin. Previous doctor recommended it. Therefore, I am here with you. So patient has come to you for uh, other opinion. Patient can't take four time insulin because patient is busy in uh, office. So let's start with the basics. So basic is uncontrolled diabetes, obesity, CKD patient, elevated liver enzyme, Next step should be lifestyle modification, oral agents and insulin. So here, uh, lifestyle modification, let's see. We uh, refer the patient to uh, experienced dietitian and uh, diet review was done and it was perfectly okay. There was no scope in the diet. Patient was following the uh, dietary precautions. Uh, physical activity, it was nil due to lack of time, due to relative lack of time. So. Uh, what we ask the patient ki uh, uh, patient should park the car away from the office maybe a kilometer away from the office which patient uh, said yes and we ask the patient to take lift to two to three floors be below the office like the office was at the 10th floor patient will take the lift till 7th floor and uh, will uh, climb the stairs up and third thing do whatever office work patient is doing uh, with uh, a standing position. Uh, standing for a long time is also a calorie burner exercise. So uh, these lifestyle patient incorporated because uh, uh, patient was able to do these uh, changes in the uh, lifestyle in form of physical activity, which was not possible uh, after joining the gym or after joining some uh, swimming classes. So that was not possible for the patient, but these things were uh, patient was following. Now, review was done after a month. Fasting glucose was 180, which was uh, 200 earlier and PP sugars were 250 and uh, uh, continuous glucose monitoring HbA1c was 11.7. Uh, know this point that uh, the, this patch, continuous glucose monitoring uh, sensor patch, that is 15 days recording of the sugars and that will give you uh, HbA1c based on that average. So that came out to be 11.7. Otherwise, if patient was uh, not going for this patch, uh, uh, this is slightly costly uh, sensor. So we can wait for three months. Remember this point, if HbA1c is very high, so we can wait till three months. In three months, there will be hardly any complication. So, but this patient can afford the uh, continuous glucose monitoring sensor. Therefore, in one month, uh, we can assess the HbA1c based on those readings. So it has slightly come down from 12 to 11.7. So it means the lifestyle modifications in terms of physical activity was working. Uh, so uh, let's assess the complications uh, once again. So uh, we ask the patient for whatever lifestyle modification which is practical for the patient. Uh, then about the oral anti-diabetes agent. So uh, patient was following the lifestyle modification. Good. Uh, oral anti-diabetes agent. Uh, now metformin was one gram twice a day and cetagliptin of hundred milligram once a day. So should we add SGLT inhibitor to the to this patient, we ask the uh, history again, we check the papers once again. So patient has taken uh, higher doses of uh, these SGLT inhibitor. So what we did, we start the patient on a low dose of uh, uh, these SGLT inhibitor and also instructed the patient for maintaining a local genital hygiene, washing the area uh, after every urination uh, and uh, uh, that patient followed. And so we were able to start the patient on low dose of SGLT inhibitor. Review was done after a month. Let's see the results. So fasting glucose came out to be 150. So it was slightly reducing. PP glucose was 230, which was uh, earlier more than 250. And CGMS HbA1c came out to be 10.5. So that means SGLT inhibitor was giving results. Even a low dose, even a uh, 5 milligram dose of dapagliflazone can give uh, good results, better results. Now, uh, problem areas, uncontrolled diabetes, CKD, elevated enzymes, lifestyle modification, patient was following. Uh, oral anti-diabetes agent, uh, we were able to uh, reinitiate uh, SGLT inhibitor. Now come to the insulin. So patient was taking insulin quite heavy dose of insulin, 40 uh, units in the morning and uh, 30 units in the evening. Still sugars were uncontrolled. So as a physician, my advice is 
how busy is your opd just ask the insulin technique from the patient so patient said ki or, or doctor i am taking this insulin for so many years so i know it but just ask some few steps from the patient so the most important thing is the technique of insulin whether patient is taking it in a wrong way therefore it is not working so we ask the patient problem areas patient was taking cold insulin means after taking it out from the fridge patient was uh, injecting the insulin immediately so uh, second problem area patient was shaking the uh, pan vigorously and uh, third problem area patient was injecting the insulin on the same side of the body parts so there is a sort of lipo uh, dystrophy uh, so uh, patient was injecting at the same site the insulin get deposited here lipo dystrophy occur and absorption of the insulin will be affected in that complication so we ask the patient to correct the insulin technique and uh, for insulin technique you can watch the previous video in this channel where we have discussed how to take insulin properly so we uh, guide the patient uh, to take the insulin in a right way and also we ask the patient to bring the insulin pen and then we checked there was a air bubble in the insulin pen so we also advise regarding the air bubble how to remove the air bubble from the insulin pen so these problem areas were addressed and uh, uh, we uh, uh, ask the patient to go for a insulin in a correct way so the insulin technique was corrected and we start the patient on 36 and 26 units because we know when patient start taking insulin in a correct way his sugars might fall so instead of uh, 40 units we uh, ask for 36 units in the morning and 26 units in the evening so these were the planning which was done for the patient and now uh, patient was instructed to share the sugar readings every 3 days so patient used to give us these data uh, every 3 days and pre uh, meal sugars were less than 70 on multiple occasions so every third day we keep on reducing the dose of the insulin so every third day insulin dose was reduced and review was done after 3 months after 3 months these are the parameters sugar fasting was 130 pp was between uh, 180 to 190 uh, uh, cgms uh, hba1c was 6.5 lab hba1c was 7.8 because lab hba1c give the past 3 months uh, uh, average sugar and cgms hba1c give 15 days of uh, uh, blood glucose average so at that point the patient was taking 10 units of insulin in the morning and 8 unit of uh, insulin in the evening patient was motivated when patient uh, saw the results uh, patient gave uh, more efforts in terms of uh, lifestyle modifications in terms of taking the medicines properly in following the advice in uh, uh, doing the follow ups in checking the blood sugar level and sharing that information with the doctor and now this patient came yesterday and yesterday the prescription said no insulin needed only the medicines were given to the patient and that too on a dose of cetagliptin metformin and low dose of sglt inhibitor and we are hoping that patient might stop these medications subsequently so this was the tough uh, case of uh, diabetes which we managed and we were able to stop insulin in our patient so if you have any comments doubts queries you can put in the comment section thank you